the way the script reads, it's like kind of teetering on this annoying character and you need someone that can like be annoying, but also like likable and charming at the same time. And I think that's a really hard thing to, to pull off. Guess who just checked in on me? Mom. Susan from Carana. I'm Paul Trillo and I'm a director. I am Rebecca Niles, managing director of live action at Art Class. Hi, I'm Ryan Keaton. I'm the co-founder and chief brand officer at Carvana. Where did this idea of the oversharing mom come from? It started uh, almost a little over a year ago, actually, where our brand positioning for a long time was the new way to do something, whether it was the new way or, uh, to buy or sell a car. You can only do that for so long. So we wanted to have a, something that we could involve, be a little bit more emotional uh, and be a new brand platform positioning for the company moving forward. And so did a lot of work, a lot of like, you know, strategy and planning and research into that and came up with this new kind of like brand positioning campaign, which is will drive you happy. And one of the four spots or campaigns that we created was Oversharing Mom. And there was a lot of heart for it internally. The concept came from Carmana directly. When we received the boards and initial pitch, the, the character was fleshed out quite well. They had like the core kind of concept of like starting talking to our son and then it kind of escalates, but they were very open to what those situations were, as well as like doing little dialogue changes and stuff like that. Paul and the creative team had a lot of fun throughout the casting process, really developing the nuances of what you would say and what you would wear, uh, which was a really fun process for everyone. The casting probably was the hardest thing of this. I, I think we had, you know, 70 or 80 people um, audition for it. I was getting nervous because uh, I was just clicking through like you know, dozens and dozens of these tapes and feeling, I was like, oh man, this spot might just completely fall apart if we don't have the right person. And then Michelle was like one of the last tapes I looked at. Once we all got on set, seeing her come into character, it was it was very serendipitous. I can't believe she's not a superstar already because she's just so funny and she really just went for it and leaned all the way in. The actress that came in, she just crushed it. I think she she was really great. I mean, we have so much content and like cut downs from the 30 to 15s and sixes in terms of like how she could just ad lib and pull this together. And so she really manifested that relatable character who is so, so excited about Carvana and wants to tell everyone. I found the perfect car. Under budget too. And I get seven days to love it or my money back. I love it. At what point did you decide or did they decide um, that this was going to be a, a Super Bowl ad and like what kind of pushed them over that, that line? We were always like intending on delivering like first week of February. And then I think they just loved it so much internally and they saw, you know, the Super Bowl aligning with the release date that they, yeah, they, they pulled the trigger. There was that carrot of dangling because I said before, it wasn't like, hey, we're doing this for the Super Bowl. Let's go get it done. We have a week to do it. It was like, hey, we want to nail this thing. And we were, I think, in front of it enough and the opportunity presented itself that there was something available for the Super Bowl. And so we just kind of kind of weighed the opportunity and made the choice there. I was at Bed Bath & Beyond and our producer, our agency producer, Liz, called me and said, you know, we need to talk about Carvana and, and everything. I was like, oh, I hope everything is going okay. Is she upset? So I, I picked up the phone and she's like, we're going to the Super Bowl. Everyone there loved it so much. They decided to buy the ad space and everyone has just been over the moon about it. Tell me about the process of, of actually making the ad. Like, where were you? How long did this take? It was eight days of shooting, but that was for four different spots. Myself and our production team had to look across the board for as many efficiencies as possible through casting, through locations, through COVID. We're shooting a scene for one spot at this location, but then we could also turn the camera over and get a shot for the mom spot. We'd get the script and then we would kind of just let Michelle go after that. It was like, it was very kind of easy for us to just like drop in and then Michelle just walks on, she does the script and then she like gave us like, you know, two or three other reads just you know, improv and, and changing things up. Oversharing Mom, plus all of these other, you know, campaign elements that we talked about as the broader will drive you happy uh, kind of brand evolution. That was done in, you know, basically around the third and fourth quarter of last year. My favorite scene to shoot was the wedding scene. Because they're not salespeople. <laughs> we rolled on that for like almost 30 minutes. And that was Michelle's final scene out of the five days she was shooting. And she just went on this wild monologue uh giving a fake speech to her fake son people had to like walk away from the camera because it was just like 
so funny. The one scene where there is the gentleman with the hedge trimmer in front of the house, that is beloved first AD Kevin Brady. And we cast for that that person quite a bit. And then at one point, Paul was like, what if that's just Brady in that shot? We're like, let's do it. Let's, let's get him dressed and put him in there. So that's kind of our favorite Easter egg to see our, our favorite first AD in the middle of the Super Bowl. What were you hoping viewers would take away from this? Like when they saw the ad, what did you want them to feel? What did, what did you want them to do afterward? I think that the main thing that this commercial really conveyed, which we successfully pushed through that we wanted to do, was that you can even trust Carmona to take good care of your mom. It really boils down to like this kind of pure expression of happiness or like unbridled joy where when something really exciting happens to you and you just have to keep telling people and get to the heart of that. I think it was a great platform for us to be able to tell that story and tell the story of, of truly how happy our customers are when they go through the experience of, of buying or selling a car with us. And so I think that was the, the big goal and that perfect opportunity. And then obviously to, to, to launch and then further kind of cement our new brand positioning was just upside.